Hurlers Bar, Castle Troy, Limerick. Anyone who knows the area of Castle Troy knows the Hurlers Bar. It's almost an institution. It is a very distinctive look and it is easily recognisable with its two sides. On one side, we see a, a two-storey building with exposed stone masonry and slate roof. And on the other side, we see a, a small single-storey building with a, a thatched roof. When I originally decided to do this project, I was drawn towards the thatched roof and I passed by here every day going to college. So I said I really wanted to look into doing this project on the Hurdler's Bar. When I did look into it, I realized some interesting facts. First off, the, the thatch side is actually the newer of the two sides, while it looks older. The original side was actually is the two-story side, and it was built in 1720s, while it's the thatch side, which is a lot newer, was actually only a renovation and built on in the 19, early 1970s. The reason it got its name is after its original owner, John McMahon. John's nickname was The Hurdler, so the bar itself became The Hurdler's Bar. It is unclear when the two-story side was actually built. Owners say that it was built in 1720s, while his online sources say it was closer to 1820s. One thing is clear, it has changed a lot in that time. As the Hurdler stands now, it's a two-story stone-faced building, but it wasn't always the case. Here we can see a photo of the hurlers back in 1962 and as we can see the front is rendered and it also the front entrance is right at the corner of the building. In restoration work that was done the entrance was actually moved and the stone faced lime mortar solid wall was revealed. It was also repointed with sand and cement mortar. The bottom plinth was left and tidied up. Also the doors and windows were replaced with more modern doors and windows while still keeping that same traditional look. Well, as I would be skeptical that these are the original windows and look like they've been replaced. Inside we can actually see that they've been properly replaced with double glazed windows, but have at least kept the style of an old style window. We can also see where the upstairs windows were replaced by the sand and cement render that's on the reveals of these windows. This side of the building was actually built in 1970, while as it does look a lot older. It was built to replace a restaurant. The bar was then extended on and there was a lot of renovation work done at that time. The reason it was built was John O'Dwyer, the new owner, was had supposedly a love for the old style of craft. And in particular, he wanted to have a thatch roof. Thatching is a style of roofing which uses old vegetation as its roof covering, such as straw or reeds. The straw or reeds are put down in layers. The ends of the reeds are tacked back up so that they reflect the slope of the pitch of the roof. This layer is then held down with a wire row that goes across them. Next, this horizontal wire is pinned down using screws and more wire which is tightened or else it uses hazel branches which are bent and use the staples to staple down the wire into the roof structure. A thatch roof can be very durable, but there is a lot of maintenance with these. Here we can see animals or the elements have damaged up around the ridge. Next, in this shot, we can see that where it is just decayed and has not been maintained. The renovation has been a huge part of the lifetime of the hurlers. For us, it is a great example of some good craft heritage. It's also an example how if certain things aren't maintained, they can get very run down. Places like this do need a lot of maintenance. In this example, we can see the different slates that have naturally come loose over time. Some, however, have not been repaired. Some also have just been repaired with the wrong type of slate and it's very evident that they're not the natural slate that was on at once. Also, issues like rotting fascia board and vegetation on the roof are going to have a large detrimental effect on the roof inside and out. 
And if we look at the back of the building, we can see the true extent of if these things are maintained properly. However, with proper restoration work, we can see how a building can keep its authentic style of craft heritage. When we look inside, we can see a fine example of how a wall inside can be restored along with its king truss rafter. And with all these things taken into consideration, we can see why the hurlers of Castle Troy is a great example of our own craft heritage.